from history. Welcome to Weirdos from History, where we delve into the delightful and droll tales of history's most eccentric characters. Today we're tickling the ivories of intellect with the tale of Hermann Kahn, a man whose girth in thought was only matched by his physical circumference. A thinker so profound, he made the unthinkable thinkable, and in doing so, became the heavyweight champion of nuclear strategy. So, buckle up! as we embark on a ballistic journey through the life of a man who thought about the end of the world more than anyone probably should. Born in Bayonne, New Jersey in 1922, Hermann Kahn was cradled in the chaos of the early 20th century. A bouncing baby boy who would grow into a pear-shaped provocateur, Kahn's early life was a prelude to his ponderous pursuits. After his parents' divorce, he migrated westward to Los Angeles, a city known for its stars, but none as luminous in the intellectual cosmos as Khan would become. Khan's academic odyssey began at UCLA, where he majored in physics, a subject as dense as his future dissertations. World War II saw him serving in the Pacific Theater, not as a combatant, but in a role that kept his brain, rather than his brawn, busy. After the war, Khan's quest for knowledge led him to the hallowed halls of Caltech, though a PhD would remain the one accolade that eluded him, his financial fates forcing him to forsake his studies. Undeterred, Khan dabbled in real estate, a brief flirtation with capitalism before he found his true calling at the Rand Corporation. Here, in this think tank's thinky confines, Kahn rubbed elbows with the likes of Edward Teller and John von Neumann, a veritable who's who of the atomic age. It was here that Kahn's fascination with the ultimate game of chicken, nuclear war, began to take flight. By 1959, Kahn was not just a participant in the discourse on deterrence, he was leading the charge. His lectures, a marathon of morbid musings, captivated audiences across the country. In 1960, these lectures were compiled into On Thermonuclear War, a tome that turned heads and churned stomachs with its cold calculus on cataclysm. Here, nestled within the annals of Kahn's morbid musings, an explosive concept, the chilling notion of megadeaths. Coined to quantify the unfathomable, a single megadeath represents one million lives extinguished under the shadow of nuclear fallout. Khan, in his Symphony of Destruction, wielded this term to sketch the grim tally of nuclear war's arithmetic. He proposed strategies to mitigate such catastrophic losses with the acumen of a master strategist. His discourse, a veritable countdown to extinction, underscored the stakes of nuclear gambits, framing them not as abstract theories, but as potential realities for humanity in the balance. Khan's work was a cocktail of controversy and acclaim. Some saw him as a sage, others as a mad scientist sans the laboratory. His ideas on survivability post-nuclear war were as unsettling as they were revolutionary. Khan suggested that life, albeit radiated and rattled, could go on after atomic apocalypse. A notion that made many wonder if Khan's brainchild was born of brilliance or madness. In 1961, seeking new intellectual frontiers, Khan founded the Hudson Institute. This high-class rand, as he dubbed it, became his laboratory for futurology. Here, Khan's crystal ball gazed into the gloom of tomorrow, predicting everything from space colonization to the economic rise of Japan and South Korea. His forecasts, a mixed bag of hits and misses, cemented his status as a soothsayer of the scientific age. Khan's influence reached the silver screen, inspiring Stanley Kubrick's Dr. Strangelove. Although Khan's physique bore little resemblance to Peter Sellers' eponymous character, his intellectual fingerprints were all over the film's darkly comedic take on nuclear brinkmanship. Khan's musings on a doomsday machine, a concept both horrifying and absurd, found its echo in the film's satirical narrative. Despite his dalliance with Doomsday, Khan was an optimist at heart. His later works, including The Coming Boom, sung praises to the potential of capitalism and technology. A rightward shift in his political leanings saw him championing Reaganomics, a stance that further polarized his audience. Yet, Khan remained undeterred, a juggernaut of judgment plowing through the fields of futurism. Khan's life, a tapestry of thought and theory, 
came to an abrupt end in 1983. A massive stroke claimed the life of this colossus of contemplation, leaving behind a legacy as complex as the man himself. Perhaps one of the most electrifying echoes of Khan's ethos resonates within the pixelated realms of the Fallout video game series. This post-apocalyptic saga, with its tongue-in-cheek reverence and razor-sharp satire, serves as both a tribute and a sardonic parody of Khan's contemplations on nuclear fallout and societal resilience. Players navigate a wasteland where vault dwellers embody the survivalist scenarios Khan once pondered with pen in hand. Fallout's vault tech, with its vats and pip-boys, channels Khan's futurist forecasts into a twisted radioactive reality, where every quest and quip subtly nods to the absurdity of preparing for post-nuclear survival. Through Fallout, Khan's influence permeates popular culture, urging us to consider the unthinkable with a smirk. As we close the chapter on Herman Khan, the nuclear philosopher king of the 20th century, we invite you to ponder the unthinkable just as he did. If you've enjoyed this atomic odyssey through the life of one of history's most fascinating figures, do drop us a like, subscribe for more historical hijinks, or leave a comment with your thoughts. Until next time, keep your minds open and your bunkers stocked.